Olá pessoal, some of you have asked me for an overview on how sentences are structured in Portuguese. So, this is what you'll learn, or maybe review, in today's lesson. Welcome back to Playing Portuguese, where you learn how to speak like Brazilian. If this is your first time around, I strongly recommend you subscribe and catch up on the lessons you have missed. They are great. Generally speaking, the structure of a sentence in Portuguese is quite similar to the one in English. In today's lesson, you'll learn how to form the basic affirmative and negative sentences, how to transform them into questions, and also how to ask direct questions. Oh, don't miss the tip of the day where you'll be reminded of some relevant aspects regarding sentence formation in Portuguese. Vamos começar? As I said in the introduction, the structure of a sentence in Portuguese is quite similar to the one in English, having the subject plus verb plus object or phrase complement order. The sentence ordered in Portuguese by default, I said by default, is subject plus verb plus object. An example. Ele estuda português. Ele is the subject of the sentence. Estuda, it's verb. In Portuguese, it's object, yeah? Well, if you want to make the sentence negative, oh, easy breezy. Place the negative word before the verb, yeah? Ele não estuda português. Ele não estuda português. Now, if you want to make an affirmative sentence a question, it's even easier. When writing, simply place a question mark at the end of the sentence. But when speaking, don't forget to raise the intonation at the end of the sentence, or in this case, at the end of the question. Ele estuda português? Ele estuda português? So, an affirmative sentence, ele estuda português. Question? Ele estuda português? Ele estuda português? See? Easy. No need for auxiliaries or maybe inversions. Easy, yes? Now, if you want to ask a direct question with what, where, how often, any question words, you must place the question word at the beginning of your question, at the beginning of your question. And add, of course, the proper punctuation mark. O que ele estuda? So, o que is at the beginning. O que ele estuda? O que ele estuda? Onde ele estuda? Com quem ele estuda? The examples we have just seen are in the present tense. But regardless of the verb tense, you will use the same sentence order in Portuguese. Subject, verb, object. Let's see an example in the past. So, affirmative sentence. Ele estudou português. Negative. Ele não estudou português. Question. Ele estudou português? Direct question. O que ele estudou? See? Easy. Now in the imperfect. Antigamente. Ele estudava português. Ele não estudava português. Ele estudava português? O que ele estudava? Ah, in the pretérito perfeito composto, that tense that you should use to talk what you have been doing lately, ultimamente, yeah? Ultimamente, ele tem estudado português. Ultimamente, ele não tem estudado português. Ele tem estudado português? O que ele tem estudado? In the future, uh -huh. Ele estudará português. 
Ele não estudará português. Ele estudará português? O que ele estudará? Ah, now let's see the future with it. Yes, which is more colloquial. <laughs> ele vai estudar português. Ele não vai estudar português. See, now it's placed before the verb. Ele vai estudar português? O que ele vai estudar? Hmm. Now, progressive tenses in the present progressive. Ele está estudando português. Ele não está estudando português. Ele está estudando português? O que ele está estudando? Hum, past progressive. Ele estava estudando português. Ele não estava estudando português. Ele estava estudando português? O que ele estava estudando? Ah, muito bem. Ready for some tips? There is a fundamental difference between Portuguese and English when it comes to the subject of the sentence. Very often in Portuguese, it's possible to omit the subject. Yes, it's possible to hide it when it's clear from the context who the subject is, and also when there is no risk of ambiguity. This happens mainly with the subjects eu and nós. And why is that, Bia? Well, take a look at estudar conjugated in the present tense. Eu estudo, você estuda, ele, ela estuda, nós estudamos, vocês estudam, eles, elas estudam. Do you agree with me that both eu and nós have exclusive verb conjugation in this verb tense? When this happens, you may omit the subject, since the verb conjugation will provide you with enough information about who performed the action, about who the subject is. If I say estudo, I am referring to eu and not to any other subjects. If I say estudamos, obviously I am referring to nós and not to any other subjects. That's why it's extremely important that you learn and conjugate verbs properly in Portuguese so that you'll be able to omit subjects whenever possible and also understand when Brazilians omit them when speaking. Yes. I'll leave below the link to the playlist on verb conjugation, so I strongly recommend you revisit and rewatch those lessons over and over. Take notes, write down your own examples. Yeah. Oh, and finally, bear in mind that grammar does accept some word or the rearrangement for the sake of emphasis, especially in writing and songs. But you'll be safe, yes, you'll be safe if you follow the default word order position, sorry, when creating your own sentences, which is subject, verb, object. Thank you for watching another lesson. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Don't forget to leave me comments and questions below. I love to read and answer them. See you next time. Até a próxima. Tchau.